you've been looking at tumor hypoxia and specifically uh, a new imaging modality in this, this study that you reported here in a late breaking abstract here in Vienna. Could you tell me about this study? What were you trying to do here? Yeah, what we did is we took some preclinical data which basically show that hypoxic cells are very radio resistant, well known. Then it's also known that hypoxia in tumors is uh, correlated with radio sensitivity of the tumor. That was known. And we did preclinical trials showing that hypoxia measured during fractionated radiotherapy is obviously a very good marker from preclinical experience and we put that in a prospective clinical trial. Now why did you look particularly at head and neck cancer? Uh, because the preclinical data is on head and neck cancer and so um, head and neck cancer is a very good model to investigate this. So what did you do in the What study? we did is we used a PET tracer, misonidazole, which is specific for hypoxia. And we did that before treatment. We did it after one week of fractionated radiochemotherapy, two weeks and four weeks. And what we found is that the two weeks time point in an exploratory cohort and in a validation cohort is the best discriminator. If there is residual hypoxia at two weeks, patients do unfortunately very badly. If hypoxia resolves in the first two weeks during treatment, patients do very well. Right, now how would you be able to use this clinically? Can you guide and specifically tailor the conformal nature of the radiation? What we would do now in a prospective randomized interventional trial is we would measure all patients recruited. They must be HPV negative because we know that's another very important parameter, HPV negative patients. And after two weeks in treatment, we do the hypoxia probe, compare it to the hypoxia probe before treatment. And if the patient is poor risk because there is residual hypoxia, we will randomize the patient to dose escalation or standard dose. And that has been done also in a preclinical trial and showed that at least in the preclinical setting, that can increase the local control rate and the outcome in patients which are poor risk, which have hypoxia left. Now, are the tumors homogeneous in this matter? No, they are not. But we, in this trial, uh, because we have some indication also from laboratory research that if a tumor has hypoxic areas, that this is also meaningful for the areas which are outside hypoxia. So it seems to be a link between hypoxia and the tumor resistance per se. And we are currently working in translational settings what does it mean? And we have, for example, some preliminary indication that it might be higher stemness, higher amount of stem cells in such tumors. So what we will do is we will give higher dose with very advanced radiotherapy to the whole tumor in the poorest patients. How do you envisage this being used as imaging uh, modality sta in standard therapy and, and how could it influence If therapy? this trial is positive, then I think it can be done in many departments over the world using exactly that kind of testing. But what we do in parallel studies is to see whether we can develop other, maybe easier ways to determine hypoxia during treatment. There are alternative ways like uh, profiles, mRNA profiles, but they do not correlate one-to-one -one with what we see in imaging. So that is still needs work. But if we have this hypoxia probe with PET imaging, that would be a fantastic way already on the way to biologically personalized radiation therapy. And you've used it in head and neck cancer. Could it apply to other tumors? Yes, I think we actually found something which goes far beyond this specific trial. As I told you, uh, the measurements before treatment of hypoxia are only a relatively weak prognosticator of what's going to happen. Measurements at two weeks during treatment are a very good discriminator. So what does it tell us about biomarkers? Maybe we have to look more on biomarkers during treatment. And that's a very important question for the whole field of personalized oncology. Could you summarize then what uh, clinicians should take away from these findings so far? Today we know hypoxia is a very bad prognosticator 
for treatment outcome if measured by PET. So that can be taken as a clinical fact. Second, there is good evidence now that determination of hypoxia during treatment is more valuable as a predictive value than hypoxia before treatment. Interventional data, we need to wait for the results of the trial. And for the general field of oncology, we need to look in biomarkers during treatment and not only before treatment. Michael, thank you very much. Welcome. Thank <laughs> you.